Today we're talking about creating the uh, timer control. And in order to expedite matters, I've already saved the uh, controls I want for the UI and the clipboard. So I'll just do a paste and move these controls to a reasonable position and maybe resize the form so it looks a little better. And one thing I noticed is it didn't get the font right when I cut and pasted this. That one's right. That one is not. I made everything 14. Oh well, this is educational in itself. How to reset the fonts. And you notice know, one that's a really huge font is this label, which is just right now five zeros. And uh, that font size is uh, 72. So essentially what we want to do with this program is put a number of seconds to count down in this text box. Then press start countdown. And then have these uh, digits count down to show us when the countdown is going to finish. So the name of the text box is TXT Countdown Seconds. And the name of the label, which has to have a label because we want to change it as the program runs, is LBL Countdown. And the name of the button is BTN Start Countdown. So the next thing we want to do since we're using a timer is get a timer and the timers are displayed in the components so all we need to do is select it and drag it over to the form it doesn't matter where we drag it since it doesn't actually display and you'll see the timer ends up in the component tray at the bottom the way things that don't display always end up and one thing we want to do is change this to be a reasonable name like T for timer countdown now why not countdown timer and the next thing is the interval the interval is in milliseconds so a hundred milliseconds would be a tenth of a second and we want this to actually count down an actual second so we'll change that to a thousand and then the next thing we want to worry about is the uh, event that is uh, called from the, the countdown timer. And there is only one tick. So if we uh, double click on this, we'll go into the uh, T countdown timer underscore tick event. And one thing we want to put up here is a uh, global variable int uh, in num seconds and we'll go into the event uh, handler for the button and we'll say if text uh, countdown seconds dot text not equal to an empty string because if it is empty equal to an empty string means the user didn't type anything in so we can't really run the program say n num seconds equal to convert to int32 
contents of the text box. So that basically retrieves the contents of the text box and converts it to usable numeric seconds in our global variable. And then we want to get a string local variable call str num seconds. And format this string so it looks good in the uh, label we were just looking at. And this of course references the first parameter with a zero and then say comma and then zero colon d5 which basically is a format that says display it no matter how big the number is display it with uh, five zeros and pad zero to the left you know if the number is too small to show all the zeros so that makes it look nice as it counts down and then do n num seconds is the integer to be converted to the string and say label countdown dot text equals our formatted string and then we want to decrement the uh, number of seconds because one second will have gone by before our timer ticks. So we use uh, auto decrement to decrement the seconds by one. And then close our if statement. And the final thing we want to do within the if is start the timer. So go T countdown seconds timer dot and then the start method. And basically this will begin calling our timer tick event every second. And what we initially want to do in our timer tick event is pretty much identical to what we just did in the beginning to put in the first second. So we just copy that those three lines of code and paste them into the tick event. And so each time this is called we'll be decrementing the number of seconds uh, after we display the number of seconds. And one thing we want to add here is if the number of seconds have uh, dipped below zero. We don't want to start displaying negative seconds. So pop up a message box that says uh, time is up. And then, very important, stop the timer. So it stops being called every second. And close our if statement. Well, let's save this code and run it. And see how this works. If I type in 15 here and then do start countdown timer see the 15 and then as the tick event is called these progressively uh, count down and are nicely displayed with our five padded zeros and then when it finishes the uh, oops it's not doing the stop for some reason Mm-hmm.
stop it visually. T countdown timer, stop. I think what is happening here is a message box is taking more than a second to come up. So it's continuing to run uh, even after this stop is called. So what we need to do is cut out this stop. This is interesting. That shows you how timed events are so sensitive. You have to be really careful how you set up the code. And now let's save this and run it. And this time only do five seconds. and we only get one message box. So that was it. The message box was taking more than a second to come up and the stop wasn't stopping in time. Well, of course, if you really want to do this well, you'd probably have the format as uh, seconds, minutes, hours, and who knows, possibly days, and then have this formatted the same way and have the countdown be very cool and maybe have a system sound or some sound player sound play when the uh, countdown finishes. But I'll leave that as a exercise to uh, my intrepid students. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. And I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.